Let's begin with the Deputy President, Rigadi Gashagwa, who is tonight free of the burden of a 7 billion shillings graft case. The anti-corruption court dropped charges against the Deputy President upon recommendation made by the prosecution. The case had been pending hearing for 15 months. Senior Principal Magistrate Victor Wahumile reminded, or rather reprimanded, the Directorate of Criminal Investigations and the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions for taking the court through a half-baked case. Wahumile recommended an independent office of a pre-trial judge be established to weigh criminal cases before they are taken for trial. Sam Gituku was in court. Senior Principal Magistrate Victor Wakumile arrived in court, ready to yield to the prosecution's request. The application is hereby granted. Now, the accused persons are hereby warned and informed that they may be rearrested in future and on the same or similar charges. The prosecution had made the application to withdraw the charges relating to six counts worth more than seven billion shillings. The director of public prosecutions claimed that efforts to secure further evidence to the case from the DCI had been futile. The magistrate taking time to reprimand the agencies that should have performed due diligence before taking the case to court. The DPP acted contrary to Article 157 in its entirety. One cannot prefer charges in anticipation of evidence since plea taking is not a simple thing. It leads to denial of liberty, public ridicule, many a time stress, which might even lead to unnecessary loss of life. I know of people who have divorced. Wakumile was perturbed that the DPP acted on what he termed pressure from the DCI. One cannot be faulted to infer that he acted under pressure from his junior, the DCIO, contrary to expectations of the office. During submissions on Wednesday, defense lawyers told the court that DP Gashagwa and the 10 co-accused persons had been victims of political schemes aimed at UDA allied politicians. I'm horrified to learn that we could sit here hearing matters, yet we are still fishing for evidence. We write and write and write. The magistrate proposing creation of the office of pre-trial judge with a mandate to process matters before trial begins. That office should subject activities of director of public prosecution, the DCI and any other investigating authorities as relates to intended charges to scrutiny, determine number of witnesses to be bonded based on quality of the testimony and in fact set down the timelines of each case. The magistrate further recommended that investigators and prosecutors should be subjected to personal liability for their actions while on duty. This informed by the claim by DCI lead investigator Obadia Kuria that he was under quote immense pressure from his former boss George Kinoti in the Gashagwa matter. Such officers would be able to stand firm and shaken and resist the devil at all times. They would say, I'll face the sack. I mean, you can't push me to do what is wrong. The current uh, government, we want, and we want to promise Kenyans that this will never happen again. The police will never be forced to use the judicial system to oppress Kenyans who have a bit different opinion, will never again use the judiciary system as a weapon to oppress those who are against our views. When he first set foot at the anti-corruption court in July last year, the deputy president's hands were in cuffs, but today he was nowhere to be found, instead choosing to be represented by his counsel. But as the dust remains on the benches, questions linger as to how many more cases will fall in such a manner, and how many, if true, were the products of political manipulation and intimidation. Sam Gitoko, Citizen TV, Nairobi.